Hey everybody, it's your girl Claudia Jordan, and we are back with TGIF. We're here to spill the tea and break down the biggest headlines in the news and on social media. So sit back, relax, and get ready to sip on this hot tea. Please welcome Al Reynolds. Hey, Al. Ah, what's going on, Claudia? Oh, we are matching today, black and white. Look at that. <laughs> Why <can you> keep copying <laughs> me? <laughs> and please welcome our mom wiggins you didn't get the memo black and white but it's okay. i know i guess i purpose. didn't get the memo but i'm doing brown today okay um, but i'm here i'm here i'm excited i'm ready to get into these topics how y'all oh, feeling we are good are you good al yes are you drinking or are you sober yes 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 oh he wow already sound, he already sounds slizzered up all oh, right wow. oh that's a big drink too yeah i see what's happening today oh god I'm on you are too, right? No, yeah, I'm on water. Same. Okay. Well, we gonna Ooh. we gonna see what's gonna happen tonight. See what this combination gives. Oh All God. Right, let's get into these topics. The Met Gala reportedly decided to take their yearly invitation that they extend to Diddy away. Sources are reporting that, much like the Grammys, they are inviting him to this year's event. Is it appropriate not to include Diddy, even though he hasn't been charged or convicted of anything yet? Al, what do you think about this? Oh, absolutely. She can invite whoever she wants. Her and her committee can invite anybody she wants. In fact, she doesn't like Donald Trump, so Donald Trump isn't invited. In fact, Rachel Zoe, that huge fashion icon, said some negative things about um, her attendance, and she's no longer invited back. Um, some other people that aren't invited back are people like Kim Tim Gunn. You remember that fashion guy that used to do fashion police for, I, I, I forgot which network. He's not invited back. And our own, our own Billy Porter. Billy Porter is not invited back. Those are just a few names that the committee, along with Anna Wintour, has decided you can't come back. So Anna Wintour, if you're watching, you got some extra spots at some tables. Okay. I'm just saying, I mean, we are available to go. <laughs> what okay. if she puts you at Donald Trump's table? I, it'll be fine for me. I, I've done reality TV, so I've had to be in the room with people I cannot stand. And I'll see how he acts. He'll probably be shady to me, but guess what? He, he'll, I, I can be shady right on back. And plus, this is what I was personally thinking. You know it's coming up in less than three weeks. It's usually the first week of May. And I think that if he shows up on that carpet, it's going to dominate the headlines. And it's not going to be about the Met Gala and what that benefit is supposed to be about. But instead, it'll be all about Diddy out at the Met Gala. I, I understand how they would do this until they, it, even though he's not charged, I do understand why it's still a bad look. Armand, what do you think about this? What do you think? I, I agree. I don't think that he should go, but if I'm Diddy, I don't want to go. So I don't really care to be on your invite list anyway. I got so much going on. I don't need to be worried about going to the Met Gala in the first place. That's thing number one. Thing number two is like, again, them going, even if they invited Diddy, that's going to put such a stain on the Met Gala because so many people like us and the rest of the world we're going to have so much to say about it. We're going to be dragging Anna Winter. So it's just going to put a negative look on the Met Gala as a whole. And I just think they just rather stay away from it right now until things get cleared up. You know, a lot of brands do that. So I understand why they're not including him. And if I was him, I wouldn't want to be included anyway, because I ain't going. I would be very low key right now. Uh, and, you know, people have been uninvited for, for lesser offenses than this, like lesser allegations than this. So I think she's doing the right thing. All right, speaking of Diddy, Misa Hilton, fashion designer and mother to their son, Justin, took to social media to blast Homeland Security for how they raided Diddy's home with their children inside. She wrote, Justin, uh, did Justin need several laser beams from firearms pointed at his chest? Did Christian need a gun pointed at his head while handcuffed? Should she be angry with Diddy or Homeland Security, Armand? What do you think? I think, well, of course you'd be angry with, with Diddy, but I think as a mother, of course you would speak out at Homeland Security and, you know, because that that's frightening. We know police officers to walk into a house and just start shooting people up, okay? Breonna Taylor. So at the end of the day, as a mom, you're frightened. You don't know all the details and you feel as though your son is innocent. Hey, listen, if you're going after their dad, that's one thing, but don't raid the house and, and, and start pointing all the guns at my son and wrapping him up and grabbing him up, up like that. Now, I've seen a lot of people saying in the comments, like, well, it's a raid. So that's what they do in raids. But at the same time, if, once you realize you're not get, you're not being met with fire, then you don't have to really carry on like that. I feel like sometimes police, they do too much when they don't have to do, go that far. Especially when it's a black celebrity. They yeah, they do a lot. With. Al, what do you think about this? 
Um, I, I'm probably you guys are not gonna like me on this one, but I disagree with both of you. Mm. A raid has to always maintain what a raid is. It doesn't matter if it's a raid on a black family, a raid on a white family, whether it's a raid um, for drugs or whether it's a raid for sex trafficking. Raids have protocol based on the size of which the land or space that's going to be raided. This is a property over 20,000 square feet with tons over eight bedrooms, 11 bathrooms, guest houses, pools houses, and they brought the equipment according to the standards and guidelines of a raid for a property of this size. Remember, also in a raid, they have no idea what they're walking into, so the protocol has to always stay the same, and that is that everybody in the raid is proven, is, is, is proven not guilty, but is proven a suspect until not. And that is when they will then release how they enter and roam and clear it, just like any other cop. So for me, do I understand Misa's, um, you know, heart as it relates to seeing guns and things pointing at their at her child? Absolutely. Do I have empathy for us as black people who, in instances when they're called to a scene on a crime to be in shot? And unintentionally, absolutely, but that's not what this is. This is a raid. This isn't a police call on a uh, on a fight in progress or a uh, or a criminal activity in progress. It's two different things. We have to understand what a raid means, what a raid looks like, and what one of this magnitude requires. According to what I saw, I don't think anything was violated in my opinion, except for our egos and our personal opinions. Oh, okay. see, I was with you. I was with you till you landed on ego and personal opinion. I guess the well, ego. It's, it's her ego. She's no, it's not. About... It's not her ego. She had that's well, her kid. Okay, what? and I and I agreed with that. I agree with that. So there's no argument here. I agree with that. She has a way to feel that way, and anybody else witnessed it has a way to feel that way. The yeah, same but way you can't you tell feel... a mother that's her ego that she's upset that her guns are being pointed at her son. I said people. I didn't say her. I said people because <laughs> other people, other people in the chat tried to make it a black and white thing. That's an ego play to me. I personally don't feel like that it was excessive. So that's my opinion. I agreed that she has every right to feel how she feels. So backing me down and through or across this, it's not going to change my opinion. <laughs> okay, I'm going to say this. Yes, uh, a raid is a raid. It's not supposed to be pleasant. I guess when we see examples of when they raided Donald Trump's house, none of this stuff was done to him. But, you know, really? we, can make, we can make a case with that. There was definitely none of that. And I will say this. Yes, I don't think he should be treated with kid gloves. Absolutely not. But it is funny how the media helicopters were there as the police, uh, as their house was being raided. So, like, that, to me, that is a part where they were doing too much. Like, yeah, I made sure to right. get all now, on that, camera. I, when it almost, and, and to me, to me it, almost just sounds, it almost just sounds crazy because it almost sounds like we're sitting here saying that a mom shouldn't feel any way or be concerned. because Who said like, that? You! No, you I did not. That. You I did not. Said I 110% yeah, did. did not say that. I did not. Do not put words in my mouth. Today won't go good. No, I did not say that. It's going to go great. It is, but I didn't say it. Don't say something that I didn't say. I clearly said that as a parent, I see her concern and I understand it. But it's okay. her ego. We got some uh, comments. Never said it was her ego. Uh, Jesus <laughs> Girl Behavior said, if it would have been Mark Cuban's chaps, it would have been different. It's suspicious how they exercise the law when they want to. And Sneaker Queen said it should she should be more upset with Diddy, plus uh, him him not being there. He did take off. And Melanie Williams said uh, he ain't special because of his uh, daddy wealth. Usually you're on the floor with a tarp over your head. No passes. It's a raid. And uh, we also get a comment, what happens to presumed innocent until proven guilty? Rosemary Watson said, but they didn't even put cuffs on Diddy, who is the actual perpetrator. Well, that's because he wasn't there. He took off. <laughs> he was, that's a good I point. <laughs> he was gone, though. Like, he he left his kids there for them to have to deal with it. Yeah, but the, but the cops were there, remember, in Miami. And that's when he surrendered his phones. He surrendered his phones, and that was negotiated between him and his lawyers. If I was Misa, I would really be upset with Diddy because it seems to me, because of the communication between the lawyer and Homeland Security, that they someone knew that these raids were happening. Mm -hmm. Oh, they got his phone. I wonder how far back they go and if they show the time when he, he threatened <laughs> someone else's life that I know. Okay. Allegedly. Okay. Okay. 
Yeah, in the book. All right, Lizzo spokesperson uh, Stephen Friedman is firing back at Ron Zambrano, the lawyer representing the dancers that accused Lizzo of abuse in a toxic workplace. Now, Ron accused Lizzo of playing victim. Friedman stated, with nearly half of his cases dismissed and no settlement on the way, we recommend that Ron start representing his clients and stop representing just himself. What do you think about this messy court battle, Armand? What do you think? First of all, can I just say that first picture of Lizzo, she looked good. Like, I could do that, Lizzo. I don't know if we could put it back up, but she looked really good with the black. She looked really good in that first picture that we showed. But I'll say this. Yeah, oh, right yeah. there. She looks... That I can do. Like, she looks hot right there, by the way. Um, but I'll say this. I just think that he's right. I think, Lizzo, this is a PR stunt going wrong. This is a strategy going wrong. And, you know, I'm not here for the antics. I've never been here for Lizzo's antics. I sound like a broken record because it's the same stuff, different day. Um, she alluded to quitting music, then came back and said she wasn't quitting. At the end of the day, Lizzo, you need to be held accountable for the things that you did. You came into this game trying to be all body positive. You don't really want to be that girl. You really want to be a, a mean girl baddie. baddie. And, you know, you want to rebrand and you can't and you feel frustrated about it. It is what it is. OK, Al, what do you think? Um, I think that uh, what that lawyer said resonated with me. It was things that I was thinking. And I'm sure a lot of what a lot of people have been thinking as they've experienced Lizzo and as they understand some of the ways that she has, you know, created this environment with her ex-employees and dancers. Now, the funny part is for a lawyer, though, to issue that statement for her lawyer, Lizzo's lawyer to issue such a statement, I thought was a little bit uh, irresponsible and a little bit jumping the gun. There's only three people left in suing the lawsuit. So almost half means only one person has it worked out. That means that there's a possibility, excuse me, lawyer person, that the other two could work out. So for you going publicly and trying to say that you are doing a great job for Lizzo and Lizzo, they, they have claimless cases, is irresponsible as a lawyer, in my opinion. And you hope, you hope that it doesn't come back and bite you in the you-know-what. Okay, we have some comments. Honey, honey said Lizzo got this back in the news because of her quitting announcement. I felt that quitting announcement almost felt like a suicide kind of like, I'm quitting. I don't want to, the world doesn't want me here, so I'm going to leave. I, that's what I took it as. It seemed very dramatic, like she was <laughs> kind of going through it. You know, that's what I thought. And then she came back and had to walk it back saying, like, I'm not quitting. Let Anyways, okay. Uh, Marvin DeMartian said, tired of Lizzo and Doja. And uh, Bettina Lester said, Lizzo is talented. She needs to focus on what her talent is, period. I think, you know, that seems to be like the common uh, thread here. Everyone's saying the same thing, Lizzo, that we want to go back to hearing that, you know, what you really are about your music and not this other stuff. I think you thought it was going to work out for you. And for a few minutes it did, but it's really not. It's not a long-term, it's not viable long-term. Dr. Larry and Famous said, people are annoying as F nowadays. Yes, they are. That too. Yes, yes. All right. Coming up next, Oprah reveals she was cheated on. It better not be Stedman. We're going to go in on him. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Stedman, I don't think it's him. We'll find out. And later, find out why Kanye West is sued again. <sighs> I'm exhausted, Kanye. I thought we were done with you. We'll be back <laughs> here. We'll be back. <laughs> One, two, three, take one. I thought we'd be on the same page about this, and we're not. How do I know the way I'm going to respond to it? I want you to get the vaccine, because I want you to be safe. What if you end up in the hospital? That's what I'm scared of. If you was to die, man, that would literally kill me, man. They hug you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> if it made you feel that way, bro, I would probably do. Oh, man. I love you, too. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps, and programming the blockchain. 
They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear. To jog where we please. To wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Welcome back to TGIF Soulmates. Give us some flame if you're enjoying the show tonight. And we appreciate you rocking with us. We really, really do. All right, Oprah recently dropped by the Sherry Shepard Show and revealed a story about her being cheated on. She revealed that she followed her ex-boyfriend to his other girlfriend's house to find out he was cheating. Now, I want to be very clear. It is not Stedman. Stedman has been a perfect mate and companion as far as we know so it's not Stedman don't run with it what are your thoughts and and what is the wildest thing you've done to find out if your partner was cheating let's this is where we telling ourselves to be vulnerable Armand you're the newest member here so we're gonna go to you first so okay I'll go how'd first. you make a fool out of yourself or how'd you okay. find out your partner was cheating? first of all imagining uh, uh Oprah being cheated on is just crazy you know she's one of those people that you just feel like it's like a god. You don't even think that she gets cheated on. But, you know, it's good that, you know, she's human, too. You can realize that, you know, even Oprah goes through something and becomes a, a successful billionaire. So, you know, there's hope there for all of us. Now, for me, um, the, I think the craziest thing that I've ever probably done was like, you know, we have a lot of dating apps. So I created like a fake profile and pretended to be, you oh. know, somebody else just to see. Because I, I want to see if he was on there. You know, I seen him on there. So I messaged him and, you know, sent pictures as if I was somebody else. I kind of, I basically catfished him. And I realized it was him. You know what I was mean? Was he being shady? Was he like... Was oh, he... no, he was down for the whole hookup, ready to oh. meet up. Like, yeah, but then was talking. But then I would go back and still talk as myself through text messages. And so he would like play these games like he was getting sick. You know, he wasn't feeling very well. He had um. to cancel plans. But this is when I, you know, I lived in LA, he lived in Vegas, you know, and but he had plans to be going to San Diego to the Navy base to hook up with this guy that I had created and that lived in San Diego. It was a whole thing, it was a mess. Oh. But so yeah, it was an unfortunate situation. That ain't unfortunate. That was, you was on, you know, waiting to ex. You was on your crazy. That's all right. But I get it, though. If you feel like suspicious, they won't tell you the truth. I get doing that. And I and crashed I, out. I crashed out for sure. That's definitely a crash. Definitely. <laughs> we all have one, I think, though. Al? Uh, um, let's see. So the thing about the Sherry and, and, and Oprah segment I like is just I love seeing two powerful women of media. We don't care about that. We want to know about you crashing okay, out. Excuse Come me. on, okay, okay. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. And I love how Oprah is such a word master. Like, you know, Sherry, Sherry wants to get the tea, right? So instead of her giving her tea about her relationship with Stedman, she shifted and made it about an old story, which was better tea that really changed the whole environment of the conversation. I'm learning from Oprah. That woman is brilliant. And as it relates to me, okay, is this what you want? Some tea? Yeah. I gotta be honest. She did. Huh? You doing what she did? You like? <laughs> no, I, I just, I, I just feel like as a personality, that's what's interesting to me. Mm -hmm. All right, as it relates to me, I gotta say this: when I dated women, when I'm in women centric relationships, I don't, I don't really care. <laughs> like, I don't care to find out if they're cheating. I don't care if they're cheating as long as when we're together, we're good. However, when I date men. I do care. And what does that mean? And when I say I care, because I feel like for men, if you try to disrespect me now, it's a man on man thing. So what have I done? I have been in the same space with a friend who I was supposed to be there with, and they decided to disrespect me with someone else. And I basically almost brought the entire hotel down. Oh, hmm. okay. That's interesting. Now, isn't that weird? Well, no, I mean, I do, do, do you feel like you like men more? Is that probably why you care a little bit more? Or is just just a step? I, see, for me, it's always been about power dynamics. Mm. So it's about me me having more power. I've been con. Well, Lord, don't let me not. This is the liquor talk. <laughs> <laughs> Talking, tell it. 
This is TPI. No, you know, I just feel like getting women, um, having them do whatever I want, it's been very easy for a very long time. So for oh. me, I, I know that power dynamic. For me with men, you can't use the same power dynamics. Okay. And that has been what will frustrate me, me not being able to dominate them the way that I need to dominate them to feel, you know, whole. It sounds like you're a master manipulator, Al. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Claudia, let, me, let me manipulate a comment into this conversation, <laughs> my cat. Um, okay, one time I rolled up, uh, I got half the code to my ex's high, uh, phone. I called and I found out there was a prostitute stripper, I don't know, whatever she was over there. And I had loaned him a whole bunch of money because he was going through it, but he was wealthy and then he was going through a thing. So me and my girls rolled up. I, I kind of kick the door in. Well, I had the keys, but I also did a kick combo. Like I had the yeah, dramatic effect. And I was like, we, we cheating, we cheating, we cheating. I was definitely on my, I was definitely, I could have been arrested for what I did. I oh. was that. It was a very long time ago. Uh, he had proposed to me. So I was like, you really was acting. I was feeling guilty for not saying yes. And uh, I, I don't know if that was crazy. Cause I'm glad I averted a huge disaster of marrying someone that right. was caught up with like needing his self-esteem to be mm. uh, enhanced from, from sex workers. And you know, so, a lot of that is a thing, like where a lot of men, they're like married or they're dating and they always, they, they're, they like prostitutes. Like, yeah, they don't yeah, because well, yeah, you can buy them and send them home. Yeah, they do that they, a lot. They, and if you call, you don't have to worry about them texting you and, and stalking you and stuff. Mm -hmm. one, of them I, one of them I talked to was like, don't blow up the spot because he gave me money. I go, honey, that's money that I gave him. The money is cut off, so you're done. <laughs> you're done. Mm. <laughs> anyway, sorry, uh, you know who you are, but it worked out for you. Sorry. All right, social media is in a frenzy while debating which breakup was the messiest of the year so far. People are saying Simon and Portia, and others are saying the trio of Jacquees, rapper Dreezy, and the now pregnant daughter of Deion Sanders, DeAndre Sanders, was even messier. All right, y'all, which breakup do you think has been the messiest this year? Uh, who wants to go first on this one? I, I think maybe, oh, go ahead, Al. Uh, messy, messy. I'm going to say it's Dion's because if you think of all the players in that and Claudia, you know, the real deal on all those players in that. I think that's the messiest. The ugliest is how Simon and Porsche's is unveiling. Now that's becoming the ugly. It's really becoming ugly that I see getting nothing but uglier. Like with that one, we know who the people are. Mm -hmm. It's not like he's cheated or she cheated or he's accusing her of cheating or she's accusing him. We know that it's the two of them. That's it. So that can only get uglier. For me, Dion Sanders' situation was messy. Dion get his daughter. Okay. Uh, Armand, what do you think? I think, like, I agree with Al there. I think the uh, Jacquees uh, Dreezy situation is the messiest. But I think the one we care about the most and the most interesting is the Porsche Simon. That's yeah. the one that really matters. Yeah. Like, that's the one that really matters. And let me tell you something. It's playing out in a really nasty way. And, you know, it makes for great TV. And you guys know Portia's my girl. And I still feel a little bit of this is TV magic happening. But either way, I'm here for it. And it's making for a great comeback and a great storyline. It might be TV magic. And it's also, it's if it is, it's, it's great because it's making people care because people have not been really caring about that show in a while. The numbers have been one-tenth of what they used to be. I know in season seven, we used to have four million, eight, at four, five hundred thousand. Now I'm just saying, it just went down a lot. Not saying it's because of me. I'm just saying it, it has <laughs> changed. It has changed. It has changed. Um, but I just find it interesting that Portia and Simon were spotted together like just days before the announcement. And yeah, then also... Weeks. I said something positive about her. And I heard she was negative back to me. And I'm like, girl, I'm giving you positivity towards you and your situation. So maybe there is like a still a protected thing. Maybe it's fake news. Maybe it's not really real. Maybe they are playing for the camera. We all know Simon is the new Peter as far as Wanda Peach. And I think he's very <laughs> happy with the attention that he's getting. And that's no shade to Peter. That's just been said about him for a very long time. I think Simon really wants to be in that show. Because I know if we've heard of Fallon in her interview, she said that he was the one that encouraged her to kind of go do that. So I think mm. he, he likes nothing more. Like there's millionaires, it's, there's millionaires, billionaires, and people that just have some money, right? That they have all this money, but no one knows who they are. Mm. They don't. No one mm. cares. When they walk in the building, they have to really do a lot for people to get 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 that attention. Imagine you're the richest person, allegedly, in the spot, but no one knows it. But then the fastest way to do that, marry a reality star. Now all of a sudden, boom, you are relevant. True. We're talking about you. And I see miserable millionaires all the time that hate 
that people do not know who they are. He got his wish. He got his Ozempic shots, allegedly. He got his feet done. <laughs> and, you know, he's feeling himself. You know, he went from um, Florida Evans to Bob Evans. I don't know. <laughs> Who's another Evans that he, uh, I don't know. Right. I don't know. Uh, 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 are people checking for him like that? Is he hot now? Yeah, Ooh. we are. We talk about him every other but, show. Uh, Simon Sexy now. Would you date Simon? Oh. <sighs> I, 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 I would say he's attractive if it's real. Yeah. Right. That yes, he has now, yes. all the money that he says he has. Absolutely. And all the influence around the world and country. I he would doesn't. Say, yeah. And he's definitely more attractive. But if he doesn't, no, he looks like all the other the scammers. Absolutely. <laughs> there, that's it. You better protect your social security number. <laughs> Someone's not fine like to me. Someone's not fine to me if they were they can look better, but I'm still I'm still seeing that. No, no. If you you could you a billionaire. You could be attractive to me if you right. have that decent. <laughs> Simon can get it. You know, I can entertain that. Uh, really? Me some gargles. Yeah. <sighs> you gonna feel like, you gonna feel differently when you when you get older and you have some fu money in your account. You will go. I promise you, you will not feel the same way because say it, it again. When you get older and you have fu money in your account, you will not feel the same way. You will look at people differently. I promise you this. I know there's a big age difference. But you will I, I got money no, in but my listen, account. But listen, no, but listen, but money. you know, but hold on. But God willing, I get older. You know what I mean? These looks and stuff fade. So I don't want the, you know, maybe I might find a little young boy that might be like, hey, listen, he still look good. Maybe I'm not as polished as I am in my youth, but I don't want to be written off. You know, if I got the bankroll, bring it on to daddy. I, mean, I, no, I, I would say this for me. I would say this for me. I, I, I have multiple jobs. I make, you know, some money. Um, I don't really need anybody, if I want to be honest. But if a billionaire comes knock, knock, knocking on my door, as I get older, certain things I will compromise. Like they don't have to look like a ten or a nine or an eight or even a seven. I've had a couple of billionaires come out to me, and it did not make me feel a way. I was like, "That's nice that you're rich, but I'm still not attracted. I still have to get." Moist for you. So you have to be physically mm. attracted. Okay. Yes. The, my I body see. don't, maybe men's bodies are wired differently. My body don't work like that. I can't have a guy that I think is hideous on top of me. And, and would I have to stare at the Birkin bag the whole time to get like, to get in the mood? Like there's not going to be an orgasm. There's not going to mm. be a payoff to this. I'm going to have to stare at the diamonds. And then even Well, that, haven't you had enough of those already? I mean, you're, yes. you know, do you I have had an orgasm more? in a very long time. Do not try it, Al. No, I don't mean it like that. You I'm trying to make me okay. Seem Listen, like I'm no. just out there. Okay, I'll, let me stop because everybody's so sensitive. Okay, let me put it on me. For me, I have I have done it every which way that you can possibly do it sexually. I've, I've lived every fantasy. You guys know I talk about yeah. uh, uh, parties. Like, okay, we get that's not important. That's not as important for me anymore. I, 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 I haven't had as much sex as people think. That's the problem. I have a lot of rumors. I haven't had as much sex as people think, and I wish I did. I wish I had as much fun as my reputation because she. Got it in. Okay. I wish it was more true, honestly, at this point. I don't even care what y'all think anymore. <laughs> Coming up, Shakira blasts the Barbie movie, and later we answer some tea mail. We'll be right back. <laughs> freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear. To jog where we please. To wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co-host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. TGIF. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here, and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You're going to get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. <laughs> This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps, and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. 
My mom wanted my life to be better than what she had as a kid. When I became a mom myself, I feel like my whole world changed. You don't have to be a climate scientist to want to protect the earth. You always want the next generation to have something better than what you had. Welcome back to the show. All right, y'all. Kanye is being sued by Trevor Phillips, a former employee of Kanye's Donda West School. Trevor alleges in the lawsuit that Kanye wanted to put a jail inside the school to send students who acted up. He also threatened to punch a staff member, and he also sexually, they said almost sexually simulated himself. Now, Trevor is suing for wrongful termination, hostile work environment, and emotional distress. What are your thoughts on these allegations? Al, let's go to you. Oh, baby, Claudia, this one is juicy. Now, I spoke about this on my YouTube channel last night, so if anybody wants the real ins and outs, go right on over there and get it. Um, this was done by an African-American male. So the guy that's sharing these stories is a former employee. I think his name is Trevor Phillips, and I honestly believe it. He talked about how Kanye is very uh, erratic. He talked about how Kanye yells at the black staff members and not the white ones. He corrects the black staff members, but never correct the white ones. It, to me, everything that he shared paralleled what we've seen from Kanye in the public. And that to me is what really made me endear to him. Now, as it relates to the awkward uh, navigating, he said he was awkwardly navigating this pretending of seeing Kanye jacking off while talking to him. And he in fact called a woman on the phone and told her to put on clothes that he purchased from her, for, that he purchased for her while he was doing it. So I don't know. I don't know about this one. All I know is that we're in a very Sue happy society right now. <laughs> People that feel like that they have been violated are coming to the front of the line. And in this case, is it is it hard to believe possibly that Kanye could be rude, could have created a hostile work environment, could have done some very nasty things and in, in to the tune of wanting to shave his students head and treat them like they are in a concentration camp and put them in jail for their actions. Does that seem far fetched to you, Armand or Claudia? Uh, here's my thought. Like, I feel like some of it's true. I can get with some of it, but some of it, I'm like, it's, it feels a little far fetched because if you know Kanye, you study Kanye, some of that is his aesthetic. Now, do I feel like he could have been a little rude? Do I feel like he could have cursed some people out? Absolutely. Do I also feel like, though, he comes with this kind of eclectic aesthetic, like to build cages and shave heads? I feel like, yeah, he would do that, but that's a stylistic take that usually the parents of those kids probably would want their kids to go to a Kanye school because you know Kanye, that's part of his branding. Now, I also think it's interesting that this guy is upset because he, you know, he got fired. Let's just call it thing a thing. You got fired, you're mad. So now all of a sudden, Kanye's this horrible person that created this hostile work environment. I need to see more. And now he's almost pleasured himself in front of you. Like, I don't know. I, I'm just at the point where I'm not here to just cancel every single successful black man with a sexual assault allegation mm -hmm. because you got fired or you feel slighted by that person. I'm not victim shaming, but we need a little bit more detail to this because it seems like a mm -hmm. lot of people are coming out after they get the boot and they're not allowed, they're not reaping the benefits anymore. That's how almost all wrongful uh, <laughs> work environment cases are. It really you is. You can't really say anything. Unfortunately. You, yeah, yeah, like, unfortunately, like, I, I remember I had a case yeah. against a company before and uh, everyone saw what was happening. They were witnesses and I couldn't get anyone to come forward for me that loved me and would privately support me mm. until they lost their job, you know? And right. Sally, that's just kind of how it is. So I, I tend to be a little bit more, uh, you know, empathetic, empathetic to, to it because I seen it. I remember this one sister came forward for me and she actually did lose her job. She did get a settlement as well. Um, but it was like sad that later on the same people would whisper like, we knew, but we were scared. I don't work there anymore. So now I can talk and I'm like, unfortunately, that's just kind of how it is. Now, you said the whole stylistic thing. I don't know, Armand. Um, all I had to hear was kids building a jail in a school because you think it'd be a good idea to put the kids in there. I don't, 
I, 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 no, I no, no, I'm no. telling you, no, I'm telling you. So I went to brunch. I had brunch with Kanye West before. We went to an old, like, freaking, like, it was oh, nothing. that black media? It was a claim. It was, it was literally nothing in there. We were all sitting in a black triangle. We all had to wear all black, and it was just, like, bread and food spread over on, on the table with smoke and fog machines, and everybody's sitting in, like, a freaking Masonic triangle angle. That's just what he gives. Like, it was in, like, a cave. And I was there. So this is not allegedly. I was there. I saw it. So I yeah, know we, some of this I saw stuff the photos is aesthetic. Of you the, some of this is his aesthetic. I, I saw the photos of you at the brunch that he had for the Black <laughs> people in media. And it was giving cult. And you're giving yeah. cult member <laughs> no, right I'm now. And Armand was there for it all, oh, baby. He was like, I, hey. It was his aesthetic. Like, first of all, that's his aesthetic. Y'all got to know Kanye's aesthetic. Look at all of his interviews. That's his vibe. Right. So, OK, that I can rock with you. So so your vibe, though, when you're running a school requires certain standards. So you berating kids for you, you screaming at just your 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 team, your staff. Unfortunately, you could do that in your regular life, but you can't do it in certain businesses and especially not in education based businesses. Let, okay? let me go. Let me go to the chat before I get cussed out here. Uh, K Webb said people already knew who he was before they started working with him and putting their kids in his schools. Debbie Bryant said, you know, Armand is Kanye's lawyer. <laughs> and Candace <laughs> said, I'm surprised he's even involved in school. And only with you when I see you says, uh, I'm surprised he's even involved. I'm sorry. I, I don't even understand what type of parent would trust Kanye with their child. I'm and just saying Kanye is the type of person that'll tell on himself. Like he's a Gemini like me. Like we don't we don't have to have no secret like that. I'll tell on him. Yeah, I yelled at him. Like it's no secret with Kanye. He's not, he's not, it's not a Diddy situation here for me. I feel like Kanye be like, yeah, I yelled at that fool. He's dumb. And I fired him. Allie Harris Beak said, Yeah, I don't know about the stylistic mess. Shaving their heads and putting them in the school jail is weird as as F. Yeah. Well, the jury's still out on Kanye. You say it's stylistic. I say it's crazy. I <laughs> I'm like, I'm off Kanye with the backpack, not the Masonic Temple Square Triangle, whatever you all was in, in a shape like this. Isn't that a, a, a Illuminati thing right there? I don't know. He was absolutely normal. Yeah, right. Let's go. Boy, I tell you. <laughs> I want to come back to this birth earth, a rich black man, so everybody can have my back on this show. All right, on a recent episode of the Q&A with Bay podcast, Ron Gina's wife, Manal, posed the question. Take a look. If you put some money on child support, and if y'all not married, do you think or like taking a paternity test should be mandatory? Are you asking me that or? No, I'm, I'm asking oh, okay. that to the, to the audience. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah. Cause when you're married, absolutely. I, I, mean, I guess the, the assumption is, hey, we made this child together, but. All right, do you, how do you feel about paternity tests? Should they be mandatory? Oh, mom, what do you think? Uh, I can see why. I mean, just if you, if you, I, I can say, yeah, if you're not together, we're not married. And if you don't know if we're, we're you know, monogamous with each other, you know, yeah, take that turn fraternity uh, test, especially if I'm paying child support. So yeah, I could agree to that. Okay. Al, what are your thoughts? 110%. 110 percent I, I i feel like especially when it comes to collecting money the same way if we wanted money we have to we have to do a credit check if we want to get a car if we want if we want to buy a house we have to do a credit check so you know if you want to get money from someone for creating a child with you do a paternity test to make Prove sure it. that the child that you that you are getting ready to support is actually yours and i thought about this in the whole scheme of it all, maybe paternity tests should be had at every birthing. At every birthing, maybe a paternity test should be had. Because why should anybody argue about it if it's real? The only reason you would argue a paternity test is if you think that it could be a possibility that it's not going to tell what you're saying it is. Um, I'm going to agree. I, I seen way too many really sad clips on social media where a father who actually, you know, believed these were his kids found out later on that he's been lied to the entire life of, and he's attached. And it was so sad to watch. And I, 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 I say, uh, not even just if you're not with the person. And, uh, I, I don't think that people just getting money for having kids. I think people actually need child support. Uh, <laughs> I think people should, uh, have them. I think they should be mandatory in all births. That way no one feels singled out where like right. you're being accused of being a whore or something like yeah. that. You know what I mean? It like, should maybe be part of the part protocol. Of yeah, I agree. Just part right. of the protocol. Yeah. I think the so. And, and then also, and, and, and then the man's liable. Okay. So there's no, we don't have to come back no and try confusion. to trick them. They get his DNA later on. You do it right then. Uh, Jesus girl behavior said, yes, it should be mandatory. 
Shelby W. said, I see nothing wrong with it. Mrs. Burns says, I am married and I did it for both my uh, children and for their peace of mind. And uh, uh, most people are agreeing with this. I think everyone, oh, T. Thomas said, married people are the main ones that need a paternity test. I saw something on social media. I don't know if it's real or not. I want to look up this statistics. A nurse or someone that worked in a, like, you know, the birthing unit, they were like, you'd be surprised how many babies do not belong to the dad. That they oh, I believe that. And I was like, oh, I, oh, I believe that too. Yeah. yeah. I also think, and you know, just on the educational side, it could also help with us understanding our heritage and our roots. So if we have it documented and, and forced to be part of the census or forced to be part of documentation, then you can also find your biological parents. You can also find who your family and your family roots and how and what that leads to. So Ooh. it would be easier. That'd be so uncomfortable find out your mama was out in them streets at an early <laughs> age. At yes, early or, age. or that your mother invented the telephone and your old patents. Hey, it happened to me. I found out my mom was, my mom told me one day, I think she was just like, hey, you know, she was mad at my dad. She's like, you know, that's not even your dad. It destroyed me. And so I asked wow. my dad, I'm like, dad, is that true? And he, because my dad was the one that actually ended up keeping me from birth. Like he's the one that raised me, kept me all the years. And he was like, well, shit, it might be true. Yeah. He, he was like, yeah, it's true. But like, to me, I don't see any difference because that's the only man I ever man, see. So raised you you. Well, I love that. Tell, and I have every trait. And so I, we haven't taken a paternity test. I don't know. But he could, he said it's true. She said it's true. So at that point, I guess it is true, but it doesn't reign true to me. You know what I mean? Because he's raised me my whole entire life. So I definitely think it's necessary, though. 18. I like that. I like mm -hmm. that. Because he's like, like, it doesn't matter. I'm still your dad. Yeah. It doesn't matter. He knew he knew what he possibly got in yeah. there. And he's like, I don't Kudos. care. I, I created I created this. And this <laughs> we got to go. <laughs> we got to go to break. Kudos to your dad. I think that's amazing. Actually, I really do. Yeah. All right. Keep it locked because coming up next, Selena Johnson has a message for women and later find out why an alleged Christian woman was fired from her job. We'll be right back. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual, and uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn, and she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co-host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. TGIF. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here, and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You're going to get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGIF family. <laughs> This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps, and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. There was a time in my life where I was extremely homesick. I decided that I needed a pet. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. He jumped up and kissed me and like jumped right into my arms. I immediately went up to the volunteers at the shelter and said, I want him, like, he's gotta come home with me. Not anything but lonely. Every day with turtle is a perfect day. Welcome back to the show. All right, Shakira recently spoke out and dissed the Barbie movie, which centers around the progression of feminism and how gender roles should evolve. She took her two boys to see it and she claims they hated the movie because they said it was emasculating and she agreed. She said, I like pop culture when it attempts to empower women without robbing men of their possibility to be men. Was this the wrong movie for little boys to watch if they want to feel empowered? Al, did you see the movie? Um, I saw portions of it. Of course, I covered it for the carpet. Um, I, I feel like this. 
a lot of kids, and especially little boys, just seeing all that pink is bad. <laughs> and to them, like, uh, yuck, yuck, yuck. And so you have to t- you have to meet them where they are. If they didn't like the movie, they have a right not to like the movie. As a mother, I mean, she wanted them to go to it because she wanted them to see the effects and the beauty of women, right? The power of women. So in this case, at the end of the day, little boys are going to be little boys. And I think it's okay that they didn't like the movie. Now, for her to lean in and, and not like it and say it was emasculating, that's a different story. Okay, Armand, did you see the movie? Yeah, I did, but I don't agree with her. I don't think that they should have, you know, went. If, if you were go- looking that deep into it, the Barbie is for girls. Like, yeah. it started for women. It's supposed to be for women empowerment. Let them have that. It's Barbie. We can't take Barbie away from the women now, you know? Ken is a secondary figure to Barbie. So if you wanted it to be empowerment, go watch the Ken movie. But this was the Barbie movie, and Ken is the co-star. It is what it is in this sequel series, whatever it is, the movie and I just think that it is what it is, and she took it too serious, like, honestly. Chris Hoop says she took her sons to a Barbie movie, then got upset it wasn't catered to them. I, Shakira, I like you, but why is this even a thing? Like, this is right. not even newsworthy to me. Uh, breaking news, water is wet. Okay, they didn't like it. That's fine to say it's a masculine. I don't know, because I didn't see it, so I really can't speak on it. But you know what? It is Ken is the plus one in the Barbie world. Let's be clear. That's the right. one time where the man is, he's a plus one. And that's okay, because like, we have plenty of other examples where the man is the alpha in Can life. you imagine the Barbie movie being about the man? Like, I don't even want to see that. Or G.I. Joe movie being, <laughs> yeah. you know, it wasn't, it wasn't about G.I. Joe, it was about the, the, his girlfriend back no. home. Either. Yeah. Come on, let's, some, some things can we leave alone? We don't got to redo it. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, City Baby 415 said, uh, boy, mom, BS. From the mother of sons, myself, my 12-year-old son liked the movie a lot. And Debbie Bryant said, it was for girls who like dolls. Of course they won't like it. <laughs> and uh, Daphne said, who takes their sons to watch Barbie? Of course they wouldn't be into it. And it's fine, Shakira. Shakira, Shakira. It's okay. All okay. right. It's now time for us to give advice because we give amazing advice here because we have it all together. To our Absolutely. Soul- <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you. Yeah, after some tequila. Tequila. Hey. <laughs> To our soulmates who are dealing with crazy <laughs> situations and may need a little <laughs> guidance, this is our T-mail of the day. All right, y'all, this T-mail comes from Leticia in Detroit. She writes, hey, TGIF hosts, I don't have kids. I know y'all can relate. Ooh, shade, I felt that. Shade. Oh, I felt that. So I'm that's why I'm too- dogs and Claudia's got two cats. Oh, Al. Okay, Al. Okay. Al. Al is... Okay. <laughs> so that's why I'm asking y'all childless people for advice. My friend brings her three runny nose, Dorito residue finger and juice spilling kids to my house all the time and they don't listen to her. It's never just her alone and I don't want to tell her how to parent her kids because it's not my place. She just watches them misbehave. How can I say keep them baby kids at home, but nicely? Oh, let's start with you, Al. Um, you know me. <laughs> if any, anybody has ever hung out with me, I'm very direct. You know, love your kids. Buy them Christmas gifts, Easter gifts, any gift that they need. Give them money. But you need to leave them at home when you're coming over to my crib because it drives me crazy. And I don't want <laughs> anything to ruin our relationship. Okay. Our mind. Yeah, I mean, it, it's 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 kid. I'm like this with people's kids and people's pets. People just really don't know how to put law and order into place. So I have to let people know, listen, can you get your pets and get your kids? Because I'm not really into that stuff, you know? And you can make jokes about it. You can be like, you know, girl, you coming over here with them kids? You going to watch them next time you come over here? Or if, if I got to watch them, you can't keep coming to my house. You know what I mean? Because you don't watch your kids. You know, you make it light. You know, make a joke about how the fact that you clock in the fact that, you know, they don't ever, they're never watched. And they're always dirty and messing stuff up. You can do it in a nice way. She'll catch Look, you. and another thing, people got baby friends. Forget a kid. It don't even have to be a kid. People got some baby friends. And I will tell the baby friends, hey, you can come over here, but you need to leave your baby friend. Your baby friend ain't welcome over here no more. 
That used to happen to me a lot. People would come over and be like, oh, we're going to go to Claudia's house. And she always cooks. And they'll bring the people over here that I did not invite. Then the friend come over and talk trash or say where you live and run their mouth. Uh, I didn't right. invite you over here, so don't make another plate. <laughs> um, as far as them kids, my house is very pristine and very, very clean. It's all white and like black accents and a few colors here and there. Uh, I, I have a lot of pride in my house. I chose I don't have kids because uh, it was a choice of mine. So if I don't have kids here messing up my house, you mm. will not have kids here messing up my house. Right. And if you can't control them, then that will be your first and last time at my house with your kids. Now, you can understand if someone knocks something over one time thing. But if it's a constant thing, you don't care and you don't respect my house. Because my mother mm. damn sure would tell me, don't touch anything. Don't break anything. Like, my mother would check me for that as a kid. If you don't check your kid, then... I got to live in filth because your house is like that. And you got, yeah. it's all hot over there and it's fingerprints and handprints all over the house. <laughs> everybody. That is not so, happening over here. I, d I just thought about something because we don't have kids. None of us on the panel don't have kids, but we can be sensitive though. So I think maybe the solution to this is you create a space in the house for kids and that's where the kid has to stay. Like put toys in it, put trampolines, put all types of stuff in it to entertain those who have kids. The kids can still come, maybe, right? No, they can stay home. <laughs> well, I think it's more of the. I point got a of garage like, in the backyard. <laughs> when it's time, no, when it's well, time I to tried. tell the kid to I sit tried. down or be quiet or stop playing, <laughs> you need to put in some law and order. Some parents just let their kids run their whole That's house. True. That's true. And just true. run amok. They're not finna come over here and run amok at my house. Hey, and your garage. dog's not finna do it either. <laughs> I got a garage with a litter boxes. I got a backyard that's fenced in. Y'all can have at it. Matter of fact, go pull all the dandelion right. leaves up there. I'm sorry, and y'all gonna say I'm insensitive, and you're absolutely right. <laughs> Maybe we're not mature it. enough for this one right here. No, we we no. made a choice. I'm like that with animals. My animals don't, they, there's an imaginary line in the kitchen. They know don't cross it. If I go to your house, you got animals all in the kitchen or on the pots and plants, no. I can't do it. And your like, animals come to my house, uh, they don't cross that Im imaginary line, because my dogs don't do it. My nieces and nephew, they're very trained. Hey, you you get over at Uncle Armand's house, you sit down. Same. But I got cats on my... We're never letting cats on the countertops and all that nonsense. <laughs> people already think that about people cats, because Armand, you said that before. Yeah, they will not be in my it. pots and pans. Absolutely not. <laughs> okay, we have a... D Simmons says, meet your friend outside the house, but don't let her and your kids inside. <laughs> And then uh, Dan says, I start barking at the kids and my friends. Ain't no way to have your kids being ca caused ruckus in my sanctuary. Yeah. And uh, off a kick said, be direct and honest. If you joke, she gonna think you too. You have serious. Oh, I'm I'm absolutely serious. No, <laughs> <laughs> I have a garage and I have a backyard. So it's an adult house. Sorry. It's not, and that's okay. It's okay. I think it's okay. It is okay. We don't gotta listen. We don't, you, you don't have to accommodate everybody for their choices. I'm fine. I'm friends with you. I'm not friends with your kids. Sorry. Ooh. But if Ooh. you're good kids, you can come over. It's Call the bad it. kids. I don't, I don't like bad kids. I don't. They can go. They can go All somewhere. right. What's next? Soulmates. <laughs> be sure to DM Fox on Instagram if you're in need of some amazing advice. Kids. Don't <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Your letter might just get read on here live. And then we're going to give you life changing advice that you should. Probably not follow. All right. <laughs> Fox Soul family, uh, Selena Johnson, recently spoke out about women having standards on the Harley Initiated podcast. Take a look. And stop setting standards and start setting boundaries. If you set boundaries, you don't need standards. He got to make a, over $100,000 a year. He needed a car. He need to have a job. But you ain't got no boundaries. He didn't ran up your credit card bills. He didn't cuss your ass out. But if you set boundaries, oh, I don't do calls after this time. Oh, no, I go to church on this day. All right. Does she have a point or are standards just as important? Al, what do you think? Uh, do you really want my opinion on this? Because, you know, I love some Selena Johnson. Yeah, love, speaking truth. usually love her commentaries. That's bull crap. Sorry, mm. Selena. You're backwards, sweetheart. And maybe that's why, you know, there could be some issues, not with you, because we know that you're happily married and got a beautiful family, but years, given, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, but giving advice to other women. Standards start with you. So standards should be the first thing that you develop because it relates to you. It's within you. They're about you and you have an ownership of yourself. You set a standard on how you want to be treated. You set a standard of how you want to be loved. Your boundaries are you policing your standards. So if you love me, 
then you should do X, Y, and Z. You set a boundary. I'm not going to let you call me only at 2 a.m. in the morning when you're horny and come over. You know what I'm saying? Boundaries are not physically about you, but your boundaries are the police to your standards. There's a whole lot of literature around standards and boundaries, and I, I, I definitely would recommend that people go read it because standards lie and are built from you. You can raise it and you can lower it. You have the power. Boundaries are policing your standards. If you do it backwards, you're allowing your boundaries to police your standards, and that we don't want. Okay, Armand, what do you think? I kind of agree with her because I, I kind of took it something different from it. I just thought, you know, standards of like what you look, how you look, how much money you make. And then if, 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 if those needs are met, then you don't care about the boundaries. And those the boundaries are how a person courts you, how a person makes you feel, how a person treats you. So I, it, that's the way I took it. And so that's how I agree with her. A lot of people focus on the outer and not the inner. So I, that's how I feel about it. I agree with her. I like what she said. And uh, uh, yeah. all of us, she's been in the most successful. She's been in 18 years and she's actually a, a really good wife. And her, uh, her and her husband have a really good relationship. And she, I, I work with her for years. And I, I like her takes on things. I get what she's say saying. She's addressing those people that have all these these unrealistic checklists. Expectations. She, she even said it. Uh, $100,000. I got to do this. Got to. And you don't, what do you, and, and half the time, the people that, let's be clear, the people that are saying this, what do they, they have probably not even a fifth of that, right? But, um, but boundaries don't relate to you. Boundaries well, relate to boundaries. Let me put boundaries. on the and finish my sentence. Uh, and as far as boundaries, I, I like what she's saying about how you have to let them know early that, you know, what you will and will not tolerate. I think she's making mm -hmm. less about the material things because she's referencing that people ask for money and she's making it more about how you, what a relationship should be about. Mm -hmm. I think they're almost similar though, boundaries. They, they work hand in hand, I should say that. Mm. I oh, think wait. it was like what you said, like the expectations. Oh, we versus right. the, yeah, okay. Oh, I'm sorry, y'all. You know what? We're going to do more of these relationship conversations, especially <laughs> with Alice drinking. Y'all better stick with your standards first. Your boundaries police your standards. Okay. It makes perfect sense. We are uh, coming up next. Space on Love th throws a shade at Taraji P. Henson. We'll be right back. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual, and uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn, and she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. TGIF. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as a oh. myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You're going to get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. <laughs> This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Cause when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. There was a time in my life where I was extremely homesick. I decided that I needed a pet. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. He jumped up and kissed me and like jumped right into my arms. I immediately went up to the volunteers at the shelter and said, I want him, like, he's got to come home with me. Not anything but lonely. Every day with turtle is a perfect day. Welcome back to the show. Listen, we got so carried away and we were so into these conversations that we did not have enough, we did not leave enough time to get into the Taraji and Faison story. So we're going to talk about that tomorrow here in TJF. So stay tuned for that. 
I want to thank my co-host Al Reynolds and Armand Wiggins for joining me tonight. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Rerun it again tomorrow. Run those numbers up. Stay tuned for Foxhole Face Off, and we'll see you tomorrow. Al, drink some water and take some <laughs> ibuprofen tonight, please. Why? Right. You gonna have a hang hangover, a headache? You'll feel good tomorrow and refresh because we have a lot to talk about tomorrow. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll see you. Bye, y'all.